I, I got to know the Dalai Lama because even long before we um, started the foundation in 1980, I, you know, was taken by the Tibetan cause of the Tibetans. And so, you know, I used to give them modest amounts of money. And I got to know the fellow who ran the Tibetan refugee camp, Jawa Kel, which is right in Kathmandu. And one day he, he said to me, he said, would you like to meet His Holiness? And I said, are you kidding? And that was in 1970. And I said, yeah. He says, can you arrange for it? And he says, sure. So I actually went, I was either in 70 or 71 when he asked me. And so in 72, uh, in November of 72, I went to meet His Holiness. Mm -hmm. and, and where did you go? To, to Dharamsala where I'm going in 10 days. Mm -hmm. And I have actually have pictures of His Holiness and I standing in the same place in front of his house, 30 years apart. And I gave it to him and said, Your Holiness, it's 30 years and we've just begun. Well, uh, next year at this time, uh, it'll be 40 years, so we'll have to take another picture. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I think I'm clearly one of his oldest friends over here in the, you know, sort of a bit of irony is this. We were both born in, in the same month of the same year, July 1935. Well, we, we have from for close to 30 years uh, been of major assistance to uh, the Tibetan refugees um, working with the Dalai Lama and his people. Um, I think we've done something like 75 different projects for Tibetan refugee camps that are mainly in Nepal and some in India. We do some work rather quietly in Tibet. Uh, we're also in Bhutan. The Dalai Lama asked us to do some work in Mongolia because the Mongolians are kind of first cousins to the Tibetans and we do a little in Mongolia. And um, But our longest partner probably is the Himalayan Trust which was started by Sir Edmund Hillary um, after he climbed the mountain. Um, the Sherpa said to us, our, to him, he said, our children have eyes, but they cannot see. Uh, they are not being educated. And so Ed, we would call him, you know, he was partner, friend. He was last on Everest with me in 1981. And we miss him every day. He passed away about three, four years ago. Um, and it's the, this uh, June, it's the 50th anniversary of the first star school he started in the village of Kumjum up in the Everest area. And uh, it's on. Did his work kind of inspire you to do the. Well, m mainly we have, uh, we have paid for most of it over the last 20 some odd years. Most of his. Yeah, foundation yeah. Yeah. Because um, we uh, we had started even before we had the foundation of helping the kids who were children of Sherpas we knew, mm -hmm. and at some point that struck me as being unfair because we weren't doing it based on merit, and so I had met Ed Hillary and one time he was coming through San Francisco and I said look. Can you help us? We we will we'll continue with our commitment to these kids, but we would like you to help us through your schools pick the students we should help. Mm -hmm. So the first program really was to provide housing for children who lived in other villages, so that they, where there weren't any schools, so they could go to the schools in Kumjum and a few of these other places. And it went from that to where. Um, I used to go sit down with Ed Hillary a couple times a year, going over his finances. And at some point, I saw his budget was going down. He said, ah, well, they don't really need the money anymore. And I said, ah, Ed, that's not really true. Um, he said, you know, he lives in New Zealand. And I think he was just tired of running around the globe with his tin cup out. And I said, um, from now on, you put together whatever budget you want, and whatever you don't have the funds for, 
will provide it.